Um, His Excellency uh, Professor Dr. Vishnu Klingam, um, His Excellency Mr. Ambassador, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, I'd like to present my special thanks to the European Association for Business and Commerce and all EABC staff for the industry and very impressive effort to organize this dinner talk this evening. I would also like to thank His Excellency Dr. Vishnu Klingam, uh, my boss, who allow me to introduce all of you the works of the loyal Thai government on the ease of doing business in Thailand, particularly through Licensing Facilitation Act and our step forward. I shall do my best to make it clear within a very short period, but invaluable. This is my first time, so please apologize me for exciting. <laughs> His Excellency. Thank you. His Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, the loyal Thai government profoundly aware that free and fair competition, market openness, and ease of doing business will lead our country to sustainable and inclusive growth. As a member of FTA, WTO, APEC, and ASEAN, Thailand uphold the principle of non-discrimination, free and fair competition, and market openness. The past government spent their best effort to be in line with those principles, but to create fundamental structure and attractive environment for business seem to be in vain sometimes. The unease of doing business in Thailand and corruption are outcry by both local and foreign businessmen to the past year. The question is why? Why Thailand is unable to come across this hurdle? When the current government, as led by Prime Minister General Prayut Chan Ocha, took office last year, the top priority agendas that the government pays serious attention to, other than national peacekeeping, other than constitution drafting, other than reconciliation and counter corruption, is an increasing of Thailand national competitiveness. To lift up the competitiveness of the country, the government start directly with the problem on the ease of doing business, which has been complained by investors for a very long period of time. The objective of the government is to override this problem within the roadmap period of the government as declared to the public. The government has also realized that this problem come along with the problem of transparency of law and regulations as well as law and regulation enforcement of the government official, which will finally lead to another big issue, that is to say the corruption. If no precise and immediate action have been taken against this problem, Thailand may no longer be an attractive place for business investors anymore, and we will gain nothing from trade liberalization. The government then entrusts the Law Reform Commission of the Office of the Council of State, as you may know well in Thai as the Siddhika, to do research on this matter and to propose the best solution against those problems to the Council of Minister for further action. The Law Reform Commission, as I will call this commission here in after briefly as the LRC, which is now chaired by His Excellency Kun Mi Chai Lichupan, the former Speaker of the National Assembly, we found that under the principle of the rule of law, 
The backbone of state administration is law and regulations. So the LRC set up hypothesis that perhaps law legal mechanism of the existing law and regulation themselves are the fundamental grounds of the problem on the ease of doing business and transparency in Thailand. Ladies and gentlemen, the empirical evidence which support the presumption of the LRC on the impact of law and regulations on the ease of doing business and transparency are clear in Global Competitiveness Report of the World Economic Forum, or WEF, and the IMD World Competitiveness Yearbook. According to those reports, it appears to the LRC that while other indicators are getting better, the indicator on burden of government regulations and on transparency and corruption are at the middle low ranking for many consecutive years. This scientific evidence convinced the LRC to believe strongly that law and regulations are hurdle for the ease of doing business and transparency in our country. The LRC then start the tough research. It study more than 650 acts of parliament, which is still in force day to day, and also the bill which now has been submitted to the cabinet for approval one by one. The result of study was interesting, about 90% ladies and gentlemen, of Thai legislation. Even the bill submitted today, based on the closed government control system, that means almost all activities of the people, especially businessmen, are subject to licensing, as Dr. Vishnu has said before. In the LRC view, the closed control system was fashionable style of law and regulation during the 50 to the 60s and 70s. This system was used generally around the world while an international trade was in, an, in the protectionism era. But the world legal concept had passed this post and went to deregulation in the 80s to better regulation in 2000s, and is at better regulations for better life nowadays. The LRC found that the closed control system through licensing is not friendly with trade liberalization environment of the world today. Under this system, the power to grant permission or license has been delegated by the legislator through the act of parliament to the authority, to the authority, sorry. And the authority has very broad discretionary power in granting of permission or license. Just a few legislation imports the extent to which the, the, the official can have, uh, can be, ex can exercise the power in this situation, the granting of each license depends on merit and ethic of the authority solely. Therefore, the discretion of different authority is variety and produce unpredictable outcome. Moreover, the legis legislator has also delegated the authority the power to lay down subordinate legislation determining rules, procedure, and conditions for the granting of each license as he think appropriate. When we dig down deep into the substance of the subordinate legislations, however, it appears to the LRC that almost all subordinate legislation were made to ease the performance of their power and duties of the official rather than public facilitation. The LRC found that the cost-benefit and cost-effectiveness relationships as well as public consultation has never been taken into consideration 
for the issuance of the subordinate legislation. One of the un inconvenient issue is that both Act of Parliament and their subordinate legislations have a little bit changed once they had been enacted. This matter relates to the attitude of the official that they fear of change. This is the big issue. So the, power, the provision of Thai laws and regulations seem to be static rather than dynamic as it should be. This critical situation in the RRC view because it could presume that most of Thai law and regulations may not be responsive to the current situation of the world today. Another finding is that almost all authorities do their work without collaboration with the other. Even though the authority within the same agency, they do the same. Working with other in concert manner is something strange in Thailand, in Thai bureaucracy. So the people as well as investors have to do hard work with their own cost, which is high, to run their business activity legally. They have to find out by themselves which authority is responsible for the activities or business they want to do where such authority is located, and what are document is to be used for the application for license or permission. Further, the workflow and duration for the granting of license of each authority is not open to public. This is a big issue as well. The people and in investor therefore do not know when the license is to be granted or even rejected. How long do they have to wait for? This situation is not comply with the principle of transparency and nature of doing business. It causes unnecessary administrative burden as well as unnecessary compliance and administrative costs to the people and investor. And being part to corruption and bribery of the corrupt official for foreign investor, the problem is more critical than the problem faced by the local investor without regard to nationality. As you may know well, only a few Thai legislation have been translated into other languages. So in the view of the investor who never made investment in Thailand before, this situation is similar to landing in the landmines field. Leaks are on around. The RRC is therefore of opinion that if Thailand want to turn on the light of transparency, especially for foreign investors, all legislation and regulations have to be translated into English. According to the Eisenhower matrix, however, this problem is important but not urgent because it should take some period of time to produce such legislation and translation. So the RRC decided to tackle this problem next. From the aforesaid study, it appeared to the RRC that the closed government control is not fit for all activity. It's not fit for all business, but only for the restricted activity or business which relate to national security, public order, public health, sanitary, and good moral. However, it's not possible to amend the legis legislation with closed government control system one by one because there are very much legislation in Thailand. It should be take years to do so. If so, what should be done to reach the target on the ease of doing business and so as possible as required by the government? The RRC then turned back to analyze the research one again. 
this time the RRC found one weak point of Thai licensing problem. As I have said earlier, the granting of license under Thai laws based on discretion of each authority. There were no standard procedure for the granting of license. So, in order to attack this problem directly, the RRC proposed that first, the standard procedure for the granting of license shall be set up by the Act of Parliament in which all government agencies have to comply with as an umbrella for all licensing. Second, such standard procedure must require all authority having power and duty in granting any kind of license to disclose to the public by any means, especially on electronic ba basis. The rule, procedures, condition, cost, and period of time for the applying and granting of license, as well as documents and evidence which shall be submitted all together with the application for license. Thirdly, the menu of each licensing composing of the detail, as I have said earlier, shall be published and the public shall enjoy the right to access such manual easily without charge. But if the individual asks for a printed version of such manual, such person shall have to pay for that reasonable charge. The common objective of the second and the third proposal of the LRC are to strengthen the transparency principle in licensing process and good governance. Fourth, if any official fail to comply with the standard rules of the manual, he must subject to the disciplinary penalty and may also be subject to the criminal penalty in some cases. This sanction should be imposed as a security of ease of licensing. Lastly, each authority shall review the law that empower him to grant license as to whether such license should be improved, repealed, or replaced by any other measure every five years with close stakeholder consultation. If it is necessary, the authority may conduct the review prior to the completion of five years. This measure is proposed to make laws and regulations become a dynamic tool, as it should be. The LRC also proposed that each government agency shall, in rendering licensing facilitation to the public, to establish its service link center, or SLC, to accept all application for license and to provide license related information as prescribed by laws and regulation related to licensing under its responsibility to the public. Additionally, the RRC thinks one stop service center should finally be established as a center for receiving all application under the law related to licensing. It should help the investor and the people to go to one point, other than to go to indirect, in diverse, diversion, diver, uh, in diverse way. The LRC therefore draft the licensing facilitation bill upon the five principles as a faucet and submitted to the Council of Ministers for approval. It should be noticed that this bill was one of the first six bills that this government submitted to the National Legislative Assembly once it established last year. This shows how much the current government care about the ease of doing business and transparency problem. The bill had been approved by the National Legislative Assembly 
and publishes in the government gossip on the 22nd of January this year. And it shall come into force at the expiration of 180 days as from the date of its publication in the government gazette or on the 21st of July this year. Since the National Legislative Assembly passed this act, the Office of the Public Sector Development Commission or the OPDC and the Office of the Council of State or Krishnika, which is a secretariat unit of the LRC, have set up the Joint Task Force to provide education of this act to both public and private sector throughout the country. Further, the preparation procedure as proposed by the two organizations have been approved by the Council of Ministers. According to the work plan, the OPDC shall, within the first 60 days, have to prepare an instruction for the making of manual to all government agencies during the next 60 days or during this period. The authority having power and duty in granting of license shall make draft manual and send it back to the OPDC for examination. The last 60 days shall be the period for publication of manual and make it known to public. The OPDC expected that this plan shall be implemented as smooth as silk. For further information on this progress of the work plan, you may have this information from the OPDC. And Kun Pong Ad, the Deputy General of the OPDC, is here. <laughs> Due to the time limit, I shall go directly to the key substance of the Act under Section 7. If the license to do any act is required by law, the authority should prepare the licensing manual, which is at least composed of the rules, procedures, conditions for the submission of application, workflow, period of time for granting of license, as well as the list of documents or evidence to be attached with the application. And the submission of the application may be made via electronic method in place of submission by hand, if so specified in the manual. All the authority are required to finish and publish their licensing manual by the 21st of July. The licensing manual shall be exposed at the place for submission of application and shall be disseminated in the website of each government agency. If the individual requests for a printed version of such manual, he shall pay for that and the price as specified in the manual. In order to ensure that the manual is made appropriately, the Public Sector Development Commission or the OPDC shall have the duty under this act to inspect whether the workflow and period of time for the granting of license as published in the manual comply with the rules and procedure for good governance or not. If it's, in thought, if it's of opinion that such workflow or period of time may cause unnecessary delay, unnecessary cause, or unnecessary burden, it shall propose such matter to the cabinet for change. Further, each government shall establish its service link center or SLC to accept all applications for license and to provide license related information as prescribed by law related to licensing under its responsibility to the public in accordance with the guideline as laid down by the PDC. Another substantial matter of this act appear in Section 8. 
the act place the duty to the competent official who accept the application for license to examine the completeness of the application and its attached document or evidence. If the submitted application has any defect or the attached document or evidence do not fulfill the requirements, the competent official shall suggest the applicant to fix it or fill it at once. In the case where the defect or the requirement could be fixed or fulfilled instantly, the competent official shall notify the applicant to do so forthwith. If the fixing of defect or the fulfillment of the requirement could not be done at that moment, the competent official or the authority shall make a record of such defect or the requirement to be fulfilled, as well as the period of time in which those which uh, shall be fulfilled, fixed or fixed. In this regard, the competent official and the applicant shall sign their name on the record, and the competent official shall deliver a copy of that record to the applicant as evidence. If the application and the attached document or evidence submitted by the applicant is complete as specified in the manual, the application has been fixed or document or evidence has been fulfilled. The competent official shall not be able to call for any other document or evidence and shall not refuse the application of, uh, and shall not, so, sorry, and shall not refuse the application on the ground that it has a defect or it has suff insufficient document or evidence except only one case, such ground arising from the negligence or dishonest of the performance of duty of the competent official and the granting of license is unable to make. In this case, the authority may have an order as he thinks fit, but he shall bring discipline, disciplinary action or bring the charge against all relevant competent official without delay. In the case where the applicant fails to comply with the suggestion of the competent official or the record made under Section 8, as mentioned above, Section 9 provides that the competent official shall return the application to the applicant and shall clarify in writing the cloud of such return altogether. In this case, the applicant has two choices. Firstly, he may appeal against the return of the application in accordance with the law on administrative procedure. Alternatively, he may submit the new application within the period of time as prescribed by law. After receiving the application, the authority is required by Section 10 to finish his consideration within the period, the period as specified by the manual and shall then notify the result thereof to the applicant within seven days and from the date of he finished the consideration if the authority is unable to do so, he shall clarify in writing the cloud of delay to the applicant every seven days until finished. In this case, he shall submit a copy of a written clarification to the PDC every time. If the PDC is of opinion that such delay is caused by Unnecessary, unnecessary or unreasonable ground, or is caused by inefficiency of the government agency, the PDC shall report to the Council or Minister together with the recommendation to strengthen of such agency. If the authority fail to make a clarification, as I have said, it shall be deemed that such authority commit or omit the commission of an act 
which cause damage to other person and he shall be liable to such damage provided that the failure to do so causes by force major another interesting point of this act is section 13 this section places the duty to the authority to impose the rule and guidelines for monitoring the business or activity under the license as to whether it comply with the law related to license and the authority shall have the duty to conduct examination in compliance with those monitoring rules and guidelines. Please empower the council of minister to propose the loyal decree to establish one-stop center or OSSC to be the center for receiving all application under the laws related to licensing once the OSSC has been established if the law related to licensing or rule issue under those law please card that the application documents evidence or fee shall be submitted at any place if they are submitted to the OSSC it shall be deemed that that application document evidence or fee is submitted legally under those law or rules at this moment the OPDC in cooperation with the electronic government agency public organization is now studying the best solution and electronic platform for the establishment for the OSSC. I would say that the new South Wales Business Licensing Information Service or the BLIS of Australia and Service Canada are our role models for the development of the OSSC. Additionally, every five years and from the days the licensing facilitators come into force or as from the 21st of July. Each authority is required by Section 6 to conduct review the law that empower him to grant license as to whether such license should be repealed or replaced by any other measure. If it is necessary, the authority may conduct the review prior to the completion of such period. When finished, the authority shall submit the report of the review to the Council of Ministers for consideration. In this regard, the Cabinet shall have to take recommendation of the Law Reform Commission or the LRC into consideration as well. However, please note that the Licensing Facilitation Act shall not apply to the following. One, the National Assembly and the Council of Ministers. Two, the court rule, procedure and judgment. Three, the execution under criminal procedure. Four, licensing under the law on national resources and environment, which has been participated with the public under the Constitution. Five, the licensing related to military strategic operation including the law related to armed controls and private armory. Six, and any activity or agency which shall be prescribed by the royal decree. For more detail of the Licensing Facilitation Act, you can download the English translation of the Act in English from the English page of the OPDC website or at my blog, lawdoctorboxspot.com. Apart from the licensing facilitation as mentioned above, the LRC has proposed the sunset law to the Council of Ministers for approval as well. This loyal decree requires all ministers having charge and control of each act to conduct review of law and regulations under his responsibility every five years. This is the ex-post evaluation of legislation 
So I have to make our law and regulation to be compliant with the dynamic world. The review shall be conducted with close consultation with stakeholders, and the report of such review shall be disclosed to public and shall also be tabled to the House of Parliament of Worst House for consideration. A minister who failed to comply with the duty under the sunset law shall be regarded as willful omission of the performance of his official duty and shall be the ground for recall from office on the organic law on counter corruption commission and shall also be the ground for criminal liability under section 157 of the penal court. Moreover, the sunset law requires the government agency, our government agency, to make and publish English translation of all law and regulations under their responsibility to create investor-friendly environment and transparency. In addition to the enactment of the Licensing Facilitation Act and the Census Law, as I have mentioned, the present government is going to improve the regulatory impact analysis, or the RIA, to comply with the good regulatory practice or the GRP of Asian and APEC, and to strengthen the capacity of the official in doing RIA, so as to improve the ease of doing business to make business fairly environment in Thailand. The RRC is going to use the ranking of Thailand on three pillars that are the ease of doing business, burden of government regulations and corruption in both WEF and IMD index as the key performance indicator for the achievements of the three measures as I have said, mentioned above. We expected that in 2016 the related ranking should be lift up to at least two level from the existing stance and four level in 2017. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this is the summary of the Licensing Facilitation Act. What the existing loyal Thai government has done for the past six months and what are we going to do? I fully wish that the information I just present may be beneficial for you. I would like to thank you once again for your concentration. Lastly, please accept my apology that I am unable to finish my speaking on time. Thank you.